There was no room to faint, so at least let's just go straight and now. And this is the yeah. first glimpse of the Emperor from Star Wars. Yeah, oh, here he is. <laughs> the great Ian McDermott. The Emperor of the Universe. Yeah. He gave... But the wreath through, he said, Tony, do you think I'm a bit too old to play here, Porphyria? Tony. I said, look, we're not getting anyone else. I mean, we want you, we want you, OK. Did he say that? Yeah. I think what he likes to do is play games with his tormentors. That's what he likes doing. And, of course, he's perpetually, isn't he, Tony, wanting to be caught? Yeah. As a, is, you know, it's like well, the standard is... murder thing of... Absolutely. I mean, having dared to murder, uh, he feels that he should dare to um, uh, expose... I mean, you know, give himself up or, or, or present himself um, at the same time that that um, militates <laughs> against his survival instinct, really, which is, I don't want to be caught. So he's a, he is a contrary character. He wants to be caught and then he doesn't, well, like, he, he like, doesn't yeah, want to like be caught. Sort of like the, you know, and also all that thing of returning to the scene of the crime. And he thinks he can get away with it because yeah. he thinks he is, you know, extraordinary, yeah, doesn't absolutely. he? When in fact he isn't. And also it was just a big kind of moment when Porfiri this is the great, uh, yeah. sets his eyes on... We've met before. But does that go back to Dostoevsky's views on evil and... Yeah. Well, funnily enough, it's the one thing, word, that never comes up in the book is, is, the no, is, is evil, is the notion of evil. Mm. And, um, but actually, it's exactly about what it, is, what it is, which is whether there is any real such thing as evil. Um, it kind of hangs over the book, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. Mm. It's all kind of steeped in it, but it's never mentioned. The first day of the read-through, and I looked across the table and saw Nigel Terry sat next to uh, the Emperor yeah. of the Universe, <laughs> sat next to Geraldine James. I was thinking, oh, my God. I remember we lined them up against so, you, didn't we? Yeah, yeah. You thought, start the paranoia early, I thought. Yeah. <laughs> There's no pressure here, then. It was, it, was, it was the Emperor of the Universe and King Arthur, and King it? Arthur, yeah. that's right, yeah. Yes. <laughs> Got it here somewhere. No pressure. And look at him, look at him watching you during this bit. He is just like a hawk, isn't yes. he? <laughs> oh, by the way, the extraordinary ones, are there a lot of them? <laughs> <laughs> Makes you realise that actually it's, in places, a very funny book. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Which he, Ian McDermott, plays to play its worth. Uh, absolutely. <laughs> Thank goodness. Yeah. Desperate to get my hands on a witness, you see. As for a murderer, even better. <laughs> As the Emperor. <laughs> Complete tormentor. Yeah. Now, this was a hugely ambitious scene, I remember. It's a great scene to do. We rehearsed this the night before, didn't we? Yeah. It took a long time and working out Ian's movements. Ironically, the, um, the scene at the end when Tim Potter, the decorator, bursts in. No we got endlessly wrong on the day. Yes. And yeah, we should. And, and the, the way we shot these scenes actually was every take we did from top to bottom, didn't we? And we had the decorator bursting in, and it, he broke in. It, it wasn't his fault. It was the queuing, often at the wrong moment, right, destroying the whole scene. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think that was the only time I ever saw Ian get angry. How many takes did you do of this, Julian? Can you remember? We did. A, we, we we spend all day filming it. Oh, great use of props. A great use of props. Always yeah. good with props. <laughs> Actually, did he just do that, or did you? No, I think it was set it, up. It was. I think it came out of the rehearsal. I think yeah. it was. Bit by bit. I think in the book, um, Porphyry was about thirty-five, wasn't he? Yeah. Yeah. Isn't he supposed That's to be quite true. fat? And like yeah, yeah. He's the opposite, actually, of phys yeah. physically. Oh, he is. It needed to be. It felt to me like it helped if it was a generational thing as yes. well, because yes. I mean, if you've got a Raskolnikov who's spouting all these, yeah, yeah and part and the father something that you know he's spouting yeah. all these yeah. modernist yeah. kind of theories, and yeah. he needed he needed a different generation. And of course, thirty-five in those days was much older than it is now. Yeah, yeah. We all know who you are. But it is a father-son relationship. You know, when you think mm. about it, what what what, what happened to Raskol and Roger's father? And in the later scene, actually, which is very tender, isn't it? Yeah. And of course, at the end, he says, I mean, Porfiry is effectively saying every, that thing of everybody needs a home. Mm. And he's basically saying, come home to me. Yeah. Yes, yeah. When you were saying that it was like playing tennis for Roger Federer, you I mean, just mean character-wise, you mean like playing opposite just Yeah, he's yeah, such a brilliant actor and he's such a brilliant part and, you know, it's such a brilliant scene. It's one of 
my favourite scenes. He's a very generous actor as well. Yeah, he's, he's he, wonderful. He I just watched him up to you. all day. Yeah. yeah he's, Great yeah. precision, isn't there, with yeah. the, all the moments. I mean, they'd all been worked out. It was pretty... Every take was had a similar shape. Yeah. But you, you'd worked with him um, before Great Expectations, hadn't you? Mm, yes, on Touching Evil, actually. He plays a paedophile child murderer. <laughs> nice. Another comedy. But it, actually, he played it with a wry... Humour. He replies. I think what you're saying about the father-son thing is evident in this film. This is absolutely a, a, this scene. It's coming home to dad, basically. Is it? <laughs> oh yes, the chit chat business again. <laughs> well, it's just an intimacy that he adopts now, isn't there, mm. um, with him, which is the mask though comes almost comes down in a second, doesn't it? Isn't this where he says, "Come home," God. because they see he's redeemable. You can't get along without us. That's actually That's saying, a, big, a big line in the mm -hmm. sense that, you know, it's actually about... You, you, you need somebody. You, you need humanity. Human race, you may have tried yeah. to, you know, cut yeah. yourself <coughs> off from it in order to mm -hmm. test out your theories, but you need, you need to, jo to belong to us. Mm. I'm homesick. There we are. That's not a confession. Very lucky with the lights on the days we yeah, shot here. The good. way the shadows came across. And he backs into the light. At last he confesses. After three hours. <laughs> Bloody hell. Sorry, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Finally he's admitted. <laughs>